Hello everyone, welcome to week two here in the studio. This is going to be the first day I can actually spend any decent amount of time here. So I don't get to come here as often as I would like. It's actually about an hour of a commute. And in between the days that I come here, I actually need to work. So this is really like a occasional thing. Since the last time you've seen me, uh, we've done a bit of organizing. This is what we've ended up with. I guess the workspace is now going to be in this little corner. You'll be seeing this a lot because you'll be making stuff, especially with what's to come in the next month. A couple of days ago, I got informed that there is a neighborhood kind of social event happening um, at the start of September. It's currently the start of August because I don't trust myself to edit on time. So just so you're aware of time frames. Um, and one of the options is to actually have a retail booth there. I decided to sign up just because Hey, why not? And I don't believe it's going to be a massive event, but it's still going to be a good chance for me to figure out how to set up a physical booth, how that's going to be like, just gain a bit of experience there before I take on any proper physical booths, because that is definitely something we need to do. The thing is, I am technically not ready. <laughs> I am making my own custom jars, and because of that, I'm having to wait uh, because the master object that I need for it is not ready. It should be ready soon, but I'm thinking of treating this little pop-up as a preview event, so it's more to gain feedback on what sense people like. I'm planning on just seeing what are the scents that I want to shortlist as potential scents to have in the launch collection, and then we're gonna do the mini tents today, bring it to the fair, see what people think about it, and yeah, just get feedback really, because up till now, I've really just been asking friends, family, and <laughs> yeah, I think it would be good to get some feedback on people who would potentially be like proper customers and not just someone who is related to me, if that makes any sense. This will also give me a good chance to test out the workspace, see if it makes sense the way it's currently set up. It's not fully set up. Like I have some boxes that are still not done. My fragrances are not organized. So there is all of that, but Let's just take it as a trial run and see how things go. So yeah, let's get things organized. Let's try and set it up and I'll take you along on the mini tin candle pouring journey. <laughs> okay, so I guess this is now gonna be <laughs> a familiar angle moving forward. Uh, but welcome to the workspace area. Let me just move some of these things away. I am aware there are things I would change like this is kind of an eyesore, the door, but the rest of it's fine. We've got our uh, kind of making shelf. I need to figure out what to do. <laughs> this feels very weird to actually be now doing things. Like, I feel like I've been in the planning phase of moving here. And now that we're actually here, <laughs> what I'm going to do first, while I can't find my jars, is to take out some of the fragrances that I've pretty much shortlisted. First of all, we've got matcha latte. <laughs> so that is kind of like Japanese green tea. We've got, speaking of tea, Thai milk tea. Okay, this one's an interesting one. It's called sea salt and orchid. Um, and apparently all the reviews of this one say that it's amazing. I'm not sure how I feel about this scent so far. So we're just gonna take it and try. Okay, I think we're gonna have to still narrow this down. There are way too many. I didn't, I don't intend on making maybe more than nine. Seldomer, this is basically sea salt. I really want to try this one out. I've got some of these new ones that I've never tried in a candle uh, that I'm curious to try. So we've got a tomato scent. <laughs> so that's something. Coffee, coffee is definitely something I, I want to try. I have a scent that is... Now, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know the scent of fallen rain? <laughs> That's the one. I'm not even going to embarrass myself by attempting to pronounce it. Oh, you know what we do need to do? Meet Apron. Riveting unboxing experience. Done. <laughs> how do I wear an apron? I don't even know when's the last time I wore an apron. Looking after me. Okay, I do not know how to tie this, so we're just going to have to deal with long dangly things at the back. Okay, so we've got our collection of stuff. Now we have too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 cents is a lot. 
and I was planning to do nine. <laughs> the reason for that is these are the mixing bowls that I'm going to be using. I actually have four. I left one at home, so <laughs> that's not great. So I have to do three at a time. Uh, so I don't want to do maybe nine or 12 might be the limit. I think straight away I have a duplicate scent. So I've got one that's grapefruit and mint, one that's grapefruit pine. I'm gonna try grapefruit pine. The ones we're definitely gonna try. Mango and coconut milk. Coffee, three. The fallen rain one. Sea salt, seldomer. Laundry day, number six. What sort of scents? Okay, I don't really have many florals and that I've realized might be an issue because I'm not very familiar with florals and I haven't really been like confident in that category myself. So for that reason, we don't have many right now. I'm just going to use white tea as like a floral-ish to start with. There is a mall here that <laughs> smells like white tea, so everyone kind of associates it with that, so I'm gonna leave that as an option. White sage and lavender. Uh, I'm not a fan of lavender, uh, but I know people who are. I'm leaving that as a maybe. Pineapple sage. You know what I might do? I might do, and this has been something I've considered since I've bought these uh, small bottles, I might do a mix. We might do pineapple sage and mango and coconut milk together. So that could be one scent. Tobacco and bay leaf, tomato. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. We need to take away two of these. I'm not very familiar with what Thai milk tea is supposed to ta uh, taste like, <laughs> smell like. I'm gonna try matcha latte just to tr see. Uh, so we've got white sage and lavender, and black currant and jasmine. See, black currant and jasmine, it smells fruity to me, but at the same time, I worry that people are gonna say that smells like cough, uh, kind of like fruit syrup. I think. White sage and lavender, <laughs> that's the one. So we have all of those now. I did have a box of a few of these jars, but I think what I'm gonna do instead is take them from the full pack. So these are, let's bring this here, the mini tins that we're gonna be working with. Hello, makeup focus techniques. Thank you, camera. Um, they are, tiny ones that you'd use for literally just sampling because uh, the one thing about selling candles especially online is that you can't try them beforehand so uh, it's a thing that people would be hesitant to you know buy an entire candle if they've never tried the smell before so my thought was uh, do sample tins and people can try them out and then they can try a variety of stuff as well. What I could do to start with, um, I have measuring jugs if I can find them. Are they here? Oh no, they're behind me, okay. Here we go. We've got 10 of these. I've got 12 cents. So we should be able to do this. So in terms of the fragrance, what we now need to do is calculate the percentage or what they term the fragrance load of the candle. So the percentage relative to the entire candle of fragrance oils. Um, that can, that is one of many things that can determine whether or not your candle smells strong, if it's burning effectively, yada yada yada. Um, so these are 50 milliliter tins, which means there's a lot of calculations. <laughs> we'll probably run through this at some point, but 40 grams of wax is what a 50 uh, milliliter tin can fit. And I'm gonna do 9% of that is, oh wait, no, we're not supposed to do that. So, so it needs to be relative to the entire candle. So the common thing to do is to just take 9% of 40 grams, but it's not, it's, oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I used to know this. I, it's, this is what happens when you move, you forget everything. Let me refer to my notes. <laughs> okay, so. We figured it out. <laughs> we're fine. So we're going to go with about 3.3 grams. And let us get our scale. What shall we start with first? I'm going to start with laundry day. Okay. 
Okay, this is the last one, and this is the one that's gonna be a mix. So, blending fragrances are a thing. You can do that. You just have to make sure, like, as per usual, that you're testing it and that it works well. For this one, I am gonna use some droppers, pipettes, whatever they're called. Here we go. There we go. That's our blended scent. It's like a coconutty pineapple, which I guess <laughs> with the scents we blended would make sense. Okay, so fragrance is done. That's the first of a few tedious parts out of the way. Now, what I'm gonna do, and in fact, oh, I really should have done that at the start actually. We now need to melt some wax. <laughs> <laughs> so, I could have had that running while we did that, so we would have been further along, but clearly I forgot. But it's okay, we have other things to do. First of all, let's get that going. Let's get the jug going. This is what we're going to be melting our kind of master batch in. So, I'm doing a big batch of wax that we will then divide into these and individually add the sets. And this is actually handy as well, because... I am, at the same time as testing fragrances, I'm also testing uh, the wax. So this will at least allow us to see, just across a couple of different fragrances, uh, whether it is a wax that works well in terms of scent. That was my main issue with my previous wax, is that I wasn't really satisfied with how it was throwing and holding scent. So there is that. So we're just going to leave this to gently heat. In my experience, this has been fine, but technically what you're supposed to do is get like a pot of water and put the jug on top just to be safe and avoid scalding or burning of the wax. While we are waiting for the wax, there's more stuff to do. Um, I would like to introduce you to the land of wicks. <laughs> this is not my wicks, this is my props. Where did my wicks go? Oh, they might be here. Oh no. Okay. See, I did my little- this is my little system of keeping track of which fragrance is which. It's actually quite simple because they all smell different. Okay, so for today, these are mini candles. So what are we using? Mini wicks. As you can see, each wick is a lot taller than each jar. So we're gonna have to do a bit of dividing. So while we're keeping track of our wax, which you can't see because I'm terrible at angles, we are going to apply, or stick, I should say, some wig clips. And we're going to be sticking them onto the tins with wig stickers. I've tried not using these. Um, use them, <laughs> is what I'm going to say. Then you just kind of stick it like that. That, that was not great. It was not in the center fully, but... Um, <laughs> Let's live with it. Okay, wicks are, or I should say wick clips, have been stuck. Now, let's deal with the wicks. So I haven't figured out a proper <laughs> good way of doing this. What I'm going to do for today is just cut it directly like that. I'm sure there's a way to kind of segregate out each height, like the height of each. I couldn't even just measure it. Uh, but for today, we're just doing it the simple way. Okay, so we've got all of the tins prepared. Now, it's just a matter of waiting for the wax to come to temperature. So now you can see, we've got a bit of melting happening at the base. So just to kind of ensure that this method doesn't scald, um, in a way it's, it's almost like preventing burning the same way double boiling does, uh, we just stir it. <laughs> it's what I found works well. But again, make sure that you keep an eye on it and like see if it works for you, because it may not work with your specific burner. So once this is melted, we will keep it at a temperature slightly below the temperature we're aiming for, pour them into these individually, and then heat them up to the correct temperature before we add the fragrance. That way, we're not like continuously overheating the main batch here. Okay, so we are pretty much there with the wax melting, so I'm just going to show you um, if it can focus. As you can see, liquid. It's not 
at the exact temperature we should be adding the fragrance at. But the intention is that, again, we're going to heat it here again. So I don't want to overheat it right now. There's going to be a lot of multitasking here, which you will see in a minute. <laughs> I'm going to see how well our system works. We are going to tear this and pour the amount of wax we need. Okay, good enough for now. And this individual batch is now going to be heated. The thing about wax pouring and uh, candle like pouring just in general is you will heat it up slightly higher and then add the fragrances so that it binds appropriately and usually you will have to let it cool again. So that's where the multitasking is going to come in. All of these are going to be heating and cooling at the same time and we're going to have to see how well we can manage this. <laughs> Checking on these. See like this right away has hit the correct temperature. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our first fragrance and stirring slowly to allow it to bind. You want to make sure that it's being stirred enough so that the wax actually binds to the fragrance. Oh, it really does smell like laundry. <laughs> um, otherwise, what could happen is that the fragrance might not uh, fully bind and then it might sweat on top of your candle. And that can be a potential fire hazard. Meanwhile, I'm gonna put this, the second one, onto the heater. And in fact, I'm gonna turn down the heater now because now we don't need it to go that quickly. Like we just need it to heat up. And we're gonna go with our first candle. Just pouring it all in. I really hope you can see, I'm sorry, I did not pay attention to the angles and there's too much to pay attention to now. And that's test candle number one, while it's still hot as well. And I'm gonna put that aside. And we will wash all three at once, but you wanna wipe out most of the residue, just so that you don't have these going down the sink ideally. I think our process is good. See, I have enough time for the waxed heat. I was concerned that it was gonna be too hot. Um, by the time I was done pouring one, but we seem to be okay. We're at temperature for the second one. Gonna add in our second scent. I actually lost track of which one this is. We're gonna have to find out. <laughs> Let's place this next batch onto the heat. It does cool down really quickly, like it has solidified. <laughs> this actually smells really nice. This is the tomato one, I believe. So pouring this in. There we go. And then, same thing. With candle making, honestly, it's the cleanup. It's just like soap making as well. Cleanup is the one that takes up the most time, <laughs> more than anything. So you can see why testing multiple fragrances can be a bit tedious because you're, you're doing all of these steps multiple times. Whereas if you're pouring it as a single scent, you don't have to worry so much about doing this over and over again and like wiping things out. Um, but it's important to test a variety of fragrances, especially when you're assessing what wax and what wick to use because they all will affect how the candle burns. So you may find one fragrance that works well, but other fragrances may not and you really need to kind of do some testing and that's where a lot of the time goes into candle making. Anyway, this is our third scent. This is sea salt. I actually really like this scent. I've been looking for the longest time for a decent kind of like salty watery scent. I had a few and then they didn't work well once you burn it so it smells nice in the bottle. But yeah, I finally found one that I like and I'm looking forward to seeing how people view it. Or smell it, I guess. <laughs> okay, and then we just pour... And that is candle number three of 12. So we're gonna have to repeat this four more times, basically. <laughs> have our 12 sample scents. This was quite a process indeed. <laughs> um, it's just the nature when you are testing kind of scents 
individually, you have to go through this because it's tiny portions, it's individual scents, you're gonna have to do them one by one. Um, over time, once you finalize a, your scent collection and you do it in larger batches, it's actually a lot more efficient. Um, but it was a good kind of test of our little workspace. Um, I actually quite liked it because it's kind of, you've got your cooktop here, you've got your resting space here, this is your little work area. Maybe if it was a little bit bigger, it would have been nice, but it's more than usable. And yeah, so now what's gonna happen is we need to let these candles kind of harden and then sit for a few days um, before we test them just to give them the best possible chance of curing right and having them all kind of settle. We will then decide if we want all of these scents or some of these scents. Uh, we've got 12. I don't think I will be making all 12, so we might have to cut some of them down, um, but definitely more than the final tally of scents that we go with, just so that people on the day itself can try different ones and let me know what they think. Um, we'll see. But yeah, so I think that's going to do it for today. There is some cleaning up to do, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but thank you so much for joining me on my first candle pouring experience from the studio. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.